couple of different people to give a update on my post-surgery thing because I don't think I've given one since maybe three or four months and it's been about a year and a half almost a year and a half since I had my neuroplace implants it was March 2018 and it is now August well I guess it's not a year and a half it's now August 2019 and um, they turned on the device in I want to say June or July of 2018 and people want to know, like, they're about to have the surgery, and they want to know how the hell I'm doing with everything. So, um, I'm gonna kind of break this down. I, my, um, my epileptologist said that. I have one of the weirdest cases she's ever seen. She took it to a conference of doctors who do the neuroplay surgery and they don't know why I'm not entirely better. I, um, okay, I went to a autoimmune neurologist I don't know what they're called whatever to see if my um, my autoimmune disease was still active because I was still having flare-ups after the surgery um, the first three months I didn't really have any but after that it was like every month and a half I've had a flare-up and, um, and by flare up I mean seizures all day every day pain not being able to walk having to use my cane blah 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 blah, blah. and um, she they detect with the neuropace device you know that you put the little I'm sorry I'm driving and talking probably not safe but I mean hey who's safe in my life anyway so um, I have to put the little wand on my head to scan it's I'm supposed to do it every day I don't do it every day I started off doing it every day and then I got so frustrated with the flare-ups, I just, uh, they're like, please just do it every two or three weeks. And so I put a reminder on my calendar and I'm gonna at least do that. Um, and I'll get back to that in a second. But, um, my memory's still crap, I don't know, remember what part I was in in this story but oh yeah she was taking it to conferences and they had no idea why I was still having flare-ups and when I would go into the office the neuropace um, rep and my doctor would try to you know calibrate my situation that doesn't sound right but um they try to calibrate my narrow pace and based on what was going on with me and um i go every two i go every two to three months but um at first they were like you're having about a thousand non-clinical seizures as in I can't feel them I don't notice them and they're small but they're there I'm having about a thousand of them a day 
that's been it's about a thousand to two thousand and that has not changed in this whole year and some change um and so i was like what's gonna what kind of damage is that gonna do to my brain and they were like we'll see girl <laughs> not cool um but when i would have the flare-ups i you know i was like you know this they said it was only going to fix 40% of my issue. So, you know, this is the 60%. So I have to deal with it. But it it's very disheartening to go through, to shave off all your hair and go through three surgeries because I went through the initial SEEG phase where they put electrodes in my brain and then they had to go through a second surgery and take them out and they were like you have to wash your hair every day and I'm like have you ever dated or met a black woman I'm not washing my hair every day shave this shit off because I only had it like shaved to one side. And they messed up my edges. But Jamaican castor oil. That's the truth to growing back your edges. You can get it at Walmart or any beauty supply. Or Target. We love Target. So, um. I. Um. After the surgeries and everything else I was still having the flare-ups and um it's and I still I lose my place with memory and everything else I had a bout of ataxia where I was tripping over everything and falling and I had to go to physical therapy for about six months um Basically, I'm saying all this to say, sorry, I went to physical therapy for six weeks, not six months. But yeah, basically I'm saying all this to say the neuropace surgery may work perfectly for you and you may come out on the other side of it way better than I did. But it, it hasn't worked as perfectly, or it hasn't worked the 40%. Um, most days I do feel good. Most days I don't have seizures that I can feel. So that's a blessing and I'm not going to complain about that, but those times that I feel bad, I had last week all seizures, and my daughter was like, she's about to be a junior in high school, and I kept calling her my baby in my other videos, but she's about to be a junior in high school, and she was like, I can't leave Texas because I have to stay here to take care of you, and she wants to go to school in another state and I I'm like no you're going where you want to go because who knows where I'm gonna go you know <laughs> hey but um it's when it gets bad it gets bad when it's good it stays good for a while but my doctor she got to the point where she could tell you're going to be good for a month and a half and then you're going to have a flare-up for a month and luckily I broke that cycle this summer and didn't have a, a like a full flare-up like just out of sorts and everything else um 
I've, I haven't had it for three months, but I kind of, I, I feel like somewhere in the Bible it says, don't be fearful, but I kind of live with the fear of when a flare up is going to come up and I don't know. I, I just don't know like so I keep my cane by my bed I keep my cane in the back seat of my car somewhere it's somewhere on the floor and um, I am actually pulling up to my therapist's office because aside from needing to get prepared for my my daughter, I'm so codependent on her. Um, get ready for my daughter to leave for school. I needed to really see a therapist. I should have been seeing one when I first got diagnosed or when I first found out I was having the surgery because I was I was just doing reckless shit and making bad decisions and pushing people away and everything else um because of my fear of the surgery and my fear of what could happen what could go wrong I should have been seeing one from the jump so if you don't if you're going to have this surgery and you don't have a therapist get one and get the right one. I found a black woman in her 30s. That's me. And she really listens to me. I don't need um I don't have mental illness or things like that, but I need to get things off my chest. And I just, therapy is everything. She's going to be mad because I'm like a couple of minutes late, but I need to finish this video for y'all. Get a therapist. Do it. If you haven't already done it, do it. Um, I can't stress enough how much your sanity is going to be tested in this time. Um, not just your sanity, just your sense of self. And I got the go ahead about a year ago to go back to work. And my doctor didn't want to give it to me. Um, but I was like, hey, I'm raising a daughter off a of disability. So, I need to go back to work. And I still haven't been able to find a job. And, um, that's another reason why I'm here. Um, it's, it's very frustrating. And, but my hair, it's in braids right now. But it's long. It grows really fast, so. But it's like, it looks like. A season one um, Fresh Prince haircut. He when it was really high, but yeah. So um, I I'm growing my hair out, and I'm just trying to do the best for me and my child, and really take care of self-care and I'm still going to the doctor I just went to my epileptologist last week this past week and um I don't know when that's gonna stop um with my situation but your situation may be different I hope it is I hope your surgery goes way better than mine and um and that you're able to accomplish all the things that you want to accomplish and um 
I don't know. If you have any questions, ask. I'm always here. If some of, some other people can attest to that, I'm here. Um, but I just want you all to be your best selves, your healthiest selves, and fuck epilepsy.